There's so many different pieces of equipment in boxing, like a heavy bag, a slip ball, a slip rope, a jump rope, there is a double end bag and speed ball, and the list goes on and on. Well, on this video, I'm going to tell you all about these different pieces of equipment. As you can see at the bottom here, there's an area that you can go to and you can learn all about that piece of equipment that's going to help you get better at boxing. I talk about all the benefits of them as well. Want to improve your hand, eye, foot and punch coordination? Well, the double M bag will help you do that. Here's everything you need to know about hitting one of these things. Have you ever wondered how to hit a double M bag and look like a pro and not also why do we hit the double M bag? Well, on this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about hitting one of these things. Now, what are these for? Why should we use them? What's the difference between these and a heavy bag? Well, as you can see, these are a lot harder to hit. They move around a lot. And if you're hitting something that's moving, it's more realistic. It's going to help improve your reaction speed. And as well, what's huge for these is your timing. And in boxing, we all want good timing, especially if we're competing or we're spawning, you need to have good timing. Even if you're boxing for fitness, you also want to have great timing as well for everyday life. You might be about to get into a car accident. If your timing's good, you can hit them brakes faster. Anyway, that's for another video. So anyway, these are great for your reaction speed, your hand speed, for your brain, great to train your brain with this thing. So I highly recommend them. I used to absolutely love using these when I was a young up and coming boxer. That's how I got pretty good at it. And you want to tie it to something solid up the top. I've done it to the beam in my studio here. And then something solid in the bottom. You can drill a hole in the floor and do it like I've did it. Or you can use a heavy dumbbell or something that's very weighted. So when you do punch it, it doesn't move around. How tall should your double end bag be? Well, I don't really like to have it at my head height. I like to have it a little bit lower than my head. Just up to my chin. I think that's the perfect height for one of these. You can't have it higher. You can't have it lower but I'm not a fan of that. Also, how tight should you have it? Well, the tighter you've got this double M bag, the faster it will be. This is pretty tight. So when I hit it, you can see it's moving fast like that. If it was loose, it would be a lot slower. So you could have it a little bit looser to start off with if you want, and that will make it a lot easier to hit and get used to, but I would recommend keeping it pretty tight and keeping it pretty fast and getting used to it from the start being fast. Now, what size should the ball actually be? Because you can get the bigger ones, you can get the much smaller ones that you might have seen, and then you can get this one here, which is the medium size. The smaller ones is a lot harder, but they're good for reactions. I'm not a big fan of them. The bigger one, you can hit them a lot harder, easier to hit and throw like longer combinations on them, and they're great for single shots or throwing like a nice one two on there but the medium size this size is perfect for them all you can go fast and you can throw hard punches and you can throw combinations where i'm going to show you later on in the video this is actually the perfect size and i got that made for this for that reason okay let's move on to the basics how do i hit this thing like a professional but before you hit it like a professional before you can hit it without looking at it like i showed you earlier on <laughs> you've got to learn the basics. Now, I understand if you go into a gym and you see one of these things, it can be pretty intimidating to hit because you might hit it once and then it goes flying like that and then you try and hit it again and you'll start missing it. When people do that, they think, oh my God, that's so hard. I'm not going to try that again. But there's a few things that you've got to do to be able to simplify it, to be able to make it work for you. And the first thing is, is how hard do you hit it? I'll see people coming up the gym and they'll be like, boom. They're like, whoa, it's it moving too fast. No, when you're starting off on one of these things, you've got to hit it softly. The softer you hit it, the slower it will go. The faster you hit it, the faster it will go. I'm going to get in my boxing stance position and I'm just going to throw a light jab and see where it moves. Now I'm seeing it, it's moving backwards and forwards again. Now one thing I want to talk about when you are starting off with one of these is you need to kind of forget about perfect form all the time because we want to get used to the time. And now if I was going for perfect form on this and a good solid job, watch what would happen. And it's much harder. So instead, because we're just working on time and we can always pick up the good form later, we're just going to hit it softly here. Yeah, nice and light. Once I hit it a few times with my left hand, I can see it's coming straight back. I'm getting used to throwing that, then I can throw the right hand. But again, I'm not going to be turning, fully extending, exhaling and really looking for that big power shot. It's just a, a touch. So I'm here, getting used to it. 
See, I'm not even fully extending. So I'm thinking about the timing, getting my brain familiar with the timing. And this is what's going to help you later on with being able to punch it and not looking at it. So I'm here, getting used to the timing, seeing when it's going to come back, nice and softly. Then from there, I've got used to the right hand. Now I can put them two together, do a left, right, a one, two, short punches. There. Now you can see I'm not turning my hips. I'm not really doing correct form. But again, this is just getting used to that timing. Yeah, and I can get a little bit faster, but start off really slow, really slow at first. That is the key here. Because if you can't hit it lightly, you're never going to be able to hit it hard. Now, once you've mastered the light one, two, then what I would like you to go on to is a one, one, two. So it's going to be a bam, 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 jab, jab, cross. But again, little punches. I'm here, ba, 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 little punches. Touch, touch, touch. Touch, touch, touch. Yes, there, now you can see. Now I'm starting to get the timing down. Bah, bah, bah. And that's what you want. But you're going to miss it. The way I'm showing you right now, because I've got a ton of experience on this, makes it look easy. You might not be able to get it as fast as I've just got it there. You're probably not if you're brand new to it. But the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. Now, once you've done the basics, the jab, the cross, the one, two, the one, one, two. Now, what I wanted you to do before you move on to the bah, bah, before we move on to the big fully extended punches and the combination punch, what we're going to get onto in a little bit, is throw a one-two hook. When you throw a one-two hook on this thing, boom, 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 you're kind of changing the direction of the ball. From that one-two, if it's a good straight one-two, the ball should be coming straight back to you. So here, boom, boom. See, it's in that perfect straight line there. If I do it from this angle here, one-two, boom, boom. Look, the ball is going directly in front of me. It's a straight shot. So when you're doing this, you know, that's what you should be aiming for. But now, like I said, we're going to throw a hook. Now that this is the hard, hard thing to do because the timing's off. So we're just going to do short punches. We're going to actually do a one, two, hook, two. Because after that hook, the ball's in the perfect position to throw a two. So it's going to be like a four punch combination. So it's going to be a ba, 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 ba. And it kind of puts the ball back in the position to throw it again. Ba, 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 ba. Because if I throw a one, two hook, the ball goes miles away. Like now, it's hard to get that under control if you're new at this. So if you throw the one, two, hook, two, it's easy to keep it under control. So I'm here. Bah, 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 bah. Yes, and then I can go again. Bah, 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 bah. Bah, 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 bah. As you can see, it's getting faster. I'm still punching the light, but it's getting faster. Bah, 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 bah. Bah, 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 bah. It's the one, two, hook, two. Well, what about feet and your movement? Well, when you're just starting off, you can keep your feet planted through the bah, 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 bah. Then you can move around, move around, move around, come back to it. Ba, 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 ba. Move around, move around. But plant your feet and then throw the punches at first. I'm going to show you lots of footwork stuff in a little bit on this video. But yeah, that is kind of the basics of this. And again, the basics is just to get your timing down. Get your mind used to knowing where the ball goes. And the more you do it, the more you'll be able to do it without even having to think about it. So now I'm going to throw good punches. Now the ball's going faster. You see? And because I've done this for so long and I'm used to it, I know exactly where it's going to come. Bah, 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 bah. And that's what you can do there. You can work on some jabs, fun hard jabs, multiple jabs, just to get used to that timing. Bah, bah. See, now I've got the timing down. That's why I can look at the screen because the timing, I know with the sound where the ball's going to come. The ball's coming straight back to my hand. Now, if you think about it, if you're punching straight, you know where it's going to come. You've only got to stick your arm out and it's going to hit your hand. So that's why I can turn away from the ball. So now we've got some solid jabs down. Now we can work on some crosses. Now I'm turning my hips and following through. Now you want to be hitting the ball when it comes back to you. So when you're watching this in slow motion, you can see the ball is coming back and that's when I'm hitting it. I don't want to hit the ball when it's moving away from us, but when it's moving into us. And that's where you get the clean hits on this thing. So now we've mastered the two. Now we're going to put them together with a nice solid one, two. <coughs> Same thing applies. <coughs> I know where it's coming back to. <coughs> so now we're going to move on to that one, two, hook, two combination. Now with this one, it gets a little bit tricky because if you throw that ba, 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 that one, two, hook hard and fast, the ball's going to be going everywhere. So you might have to time that last punch. But the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. So I'm here. Woo! 
I love that one. That's a combination that impresses other people in the gym when you're thrown that hard and fast. So now we've built up a little bit more advanced, some very basic combination, but what about defense? How do you defend using this? Well, there's a couple of ways. The first way, just like you do on a heavy bag, where you're punching and then you're moving after. So I'm moving here, which we always should be doing anyway to get better at boxing moving, but it's not coming to hit my head. For you to be able to actually really move out the way of this guy, you need to get closer. You need to get your feet closer. If I'm here and I throw a solid one too, I don't have to move anywhere. But if I'm here and I throw that good one too, I've got to move out the way or it's going to hit me in the face. And the last thing that I want when I'm doing this video is to get a bloody nose of a double end bag when I'm trying to impress you guys. So yeah, don't get hit in the face of it, but it could happen. That's why you've got to be fast. That's why these things are so good because you could get hit in the face. And I'll hit it, I'll slip. And as you're seeing there in slow motion here, you see when I'm slipping, the ball is hitting my shoulder. And that is because I'm taking my head off the center line. And if I didn't slip, it would hit me straight in the face. So that's great for you to work on at first. Just a one, two, slip. Or you can do a one, two, one, two, slip to your right, one, two, slip to your left. Then once you've started doing that, you can start doing some freestyle stuff where I might do like a jab, slip, jab, slip. And as you can see here, I'm slipping as the ball's coming straight from my face, slipping left, slipping right, getting used to moving that head. Now we've worked on the basics, some advanced punches, some hard punches, some Defense as well. Now let's move on to the combination punches. Throwing a combination on this guy is pretty tricky, but you can do it. Believe me, after watching this, you will be able to throw these combinations. So what combinations should you throw? Well, a combination I used to love to throw is a one, two, one, one, two, keeping it straight. And this is more basic because we know the punches are going straight. So the ball's gonna come straight to us. So one, two, one, one, two, <laughs> again. <laughs> Woo, nice combo. And you see, it looks pretty impressive because it is fast and the ball's coming and you've got to hit it fast to catch the ball on the way back. When you're first working on that combination, start slow. One, two, one, one, two. Get used to the timing. Forget about your good form here because we want to learn the timing rather than good form. So I'm here, one, two, one, one, two. One, two, one, one, two. Getting that timing down. Now I think I've got the timing, then you can pick it up. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Now moving on to our next combination we're going to throw, we're going to add in a defensive move. And this one's going to be a 1-1-2, one, one, slip 2. So it's here. 1-1-2, ba, 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 ba. One, one, slip 2. Now if you come close to it, after that 2, you've got to get out of the way of the ball. So we were using them defences that we worked on in the last section. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. And then what we can do from there, we can add a hook on the end. So now we're going to do a 1-1-2, one, one, slip 2, hook. And now because we have worked on the one, two, hook. We should know where that ball is going to be when we throw this punch. So, one, one, two, slip, two, hook. <laughs> yeah, the ball's going crazy. So let's add that two on the end. One, one, two, slip, two, hook, two. Look at that. That's a six punch combination. Six punches, defensive move on a double end bag. Let's do it. <laughs> Ooh, feels good. One, one, two, slip, two, hook, two. Hard combo to throw. Now the last combo I'm gonna show you on this is gonna be non-stop punching. It's kinda of a great tool for working out and it's not kind of a combo that you would use in the fight unless you've got someone against the ropes. It's just like punching, left, right, left, right. So to do this, you wanna start slow. Bum, bum, bum. And now I'm getting the rhythm, getting used to where it's gonna go. Now, cause I've got that timing, I can look at you when I can talk to you and then I can punch harder, then harder. And again, cause I've got that rhythm, I don't even have to look, I can close my eyes like this because you've got that rhythm. Yeah, that's a great combo that you can do, you can work on helping with your timing, but also helping with your stamina. Okay, now this fancy footwork stuff. How do we do it? How do we do the alley shuffle and hit the back at the same time? Well, we're not going to be doing that today. That's actually the first time I've ever done that and it worked. So maybe I'll do a video on that later on. Not really. <laughs> so. This footwork, we always want to have good form technique if we're on a bag, if we're on the ball, if we're in the ring, if we're shadow boxing. Whatever we're doing, footwork is so important. So what do you want to do? Well, you want to keep your feet apart all the time, hands up when you're moving. So I just want to compare with you with standard 
crappy footwork to great footwork. We're gonna go side by side here and you will be able to see the difference. And this is what most people do on the heavy bag. They'll be stepping around, flat footed, throwing slow crappy punches. You don't wanna be like that. Now compare that with good footwork. As you can see here, I'm on my toes, I'm moving around. I look a lot more athletic. I look a lot more like a real professional boxer. My punches are faster because my feet are faster. And because my feet are faster, my defense is faster as well. So that's it right there, on your toes, moving around. When you step, you can punch at the same time. So if I throw a one, one, two, I can step and punch. Step, step, step. It'll look like this. See, I'm in and out with the feet. Again, here. Yeah, moving around all the time. Now you might be thinking, yes, Tony, that burns so much energy. If I do that all the time, well, guess what? You're right. It does burn energy, but you want to condition yourself to be able to do that all the time. I've done a full video on this channel where I talk about how you can be as sharp in the first 30 seconds of the first round to the last 30 seconds in the last round by building your stamina. Click the link below. Watch that video after this where I show you how to build your stamina in boxing. Once you've built your stamina, you will be able to do that all day long. It's just all about conditioning. And if you can do that, all day long, well maybe not all day, but if you can do that for your full session, you're gonna look a million dollars in the gym. Now moving on to workouts. What workouts can you do on this? Well, this is great to mix in with your heavy bag work. The heavy bag's got so many benefits to it, like you can punch it hard, you can throw like body punches, head punches, which is great that you can't do on this guy. So you don't wanna just totally avoid the heavy bag just to play on this, cause it's a little bit more fun when you start getting used to it and getting more creative. But yeah, split the session up. I would do heavy bag and I would do ball. Or if you want, when you're getting used to this at first, you know, spend three, four, five, six rounds on the ball, working on the basics of this video when I showed you how to punch light, work on that stuff to get your timing right because it's all about timing and the good thing about this is it's like riding a bike once you get that timing it stays with you forever if you've got access to it definitely use it as much as you can also try and practice this combination here where you're just punching the bag non-stop this is going to really help with your timing and give you a great workout as well so for the last 20 seconds of a round try and get this going and that's going to be a great extension of your workout and the last thing i want to add about the workout is if you're punching this hard and fast moving your feet moving your head doing everything that you should be doing you're going to get a very very good high intensity workout that's going to help improve your overall stamina your timing your endurance your brain functioning your footwork your core everything if you're doing everything correctly jump rope is always associated with boxing but why well there's so many benefits to it for boxers and how do you do it well let me explain on this video i'm going to teach you how to jump rope there's actually four different variations i'm going to show you right now which is the very beginner people who's never even touched the jump rope before to the beginner to the intermediate, to the advanced. First things first, I get asked all the time, how long should the jump rope be? Well, I'd say it needs to be a little bit higher than your hip height, just like there. These new jump ropes that I've just created have got this here, so you can turn it and you can simply adjust the height to whatever height you want it. If you've got a jump rope that hasn't got this, you can easily tie a knot in here. That'll make it a little bit smaller to adjust the height for you. Now, let's get started. You've never jump roped ever before in your life. And when you try, it can be pretty intimidating. It's easy for you to say, oh, I'm not doing that, I can't do it. But like anything, anything in life, you've got to practice to get better and better. How do you start? You start with the rope behind your feet there, hands in front. Now you're just going to turn your wrists. I'll see often where people try and turn their arms, that's too much, you're just going to turn your wrists lightly. So to get started, I'm going to do a, a bigger turn with my arms to get the rope around, and then it's going to be small turns with my wrist. With the jumping, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a jump, and then a jump in between, jump over, jump in between, jump over. So you're doing two jumps, but every time the rope goes underneath your feet. This is the easiest way to learn how to jump rope. So jump, jump. So that's the very beginner. And then you can start picking it up, doing a jump. You're picking, picking the speed up, doing a jump every time the rope goes under, like that. So that right there is the very beginner to the beginner. Now, when you get comfortable with the single jumps, getting the rope under each time you jump, then you can pick it up. Now you're gonna go into some steps. So you're stepping over, left, right, left, right. Every time you're stepping, 
the ropes going under. This is actually easier than the two feet together. This, you work on both your legs at once. This, you rest them one leg at a time. But this is kind of like the intermediate. And from here, you can pick it up. When you get comfortable with the two jumps, the one jump, then the one foot together, then you've kind of mastered the jump up. Now you can start getting fancy, doing fancy things like you see on the Rocky movies, where you can try a double under, where you do one jump, and the rope goes under twice. Then you can do multiple ones of them. When you get comfortable doing one, you can do multiple. So there, every time I'm jumping, the rope's going under my feet two times. And then you can start doing crossing, crisscross. So if you notice when I'm doing this, I cross my arms, the rope goes under. As it comes over my head, I'm doing it straight, doing a normal jump, and then back to the cross. I'll show you again. There, there. So I'm crossing it, then doing a normal jump. Crossing, normal jump. And then once you get used to that, you've done the double jumps, and then you've done the crossing, now you can do a double jump with the cross. This is a lot more advanced. So here, I'll show you. So the double jump, now the second time it comes round, I'm gonna cross it. See that? So again. Then when you get comfortable at that, you can start doing it multiple times, like this. Then from there, we can turn the rope to the side, jump in, turn the side, side, jump, side, side, jump, side, side, jump. And that's it. That's kind of some of the advanced things that you can do right there with the jump rope. Real quick before I end this video, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the jump ropes. They're adjustable. They come with this little handy screwdriver. So you can loosen it here, you can adjust the height that you want to go with and you can tighten it up and you can nip it with the little screwdriver that's included. They also come with a bag. The handle is aluminium, it's really light and it comes with two bar bearings unlike most ropes. So look, it spins this way and then as well it spins this way. So it will never get tangled like most other jump ropes. The wire is very light so you can get some speed on there and it comes in the right height no matter whether you're seven foot tall or you're four foot tall. You can adjust it so it is perfect for you. Do you want to box with a boxing robot? Well, this next section, we're going to show you the world's first boxing robot. I'm about to box with the world's first boxing robot. This thing can do all sorts, including sparring. It can hard spar, it can light spar. You can technique spar with this. You can even put this in southpaw mode so you can spar with a southpaw. And also this can be like your mitt guy where you can punch it in four different combinations. So if you're training alone, well, apparently this can be your new coach. And I'm gonna be trying all of these different functions out to see how it is. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna be hard sparring with this guy because no way can I get beat off a mechanical robot, right? Well, let's take a look. So as you can see, this device, it's got like a head and a body, and these right here is like the four arms. These are the ones that's coming for your head, throwing the straight punches, and these ones on the side is the ones that come around for hooks. So whether you're throwing a hook or you're blocking a hook, or whether you're throwing a jab or you're slipping a jab, that's what these things are for. Then inside of the machine, we've got the three different modes. We've got the practice mode, the sparring mode and the combo mode. With the practice mode, this is where you can drill in different defenses. You can have this thrown single punch at you where it might be a jab and all you're gonna do is slip the jab on a cross and work on defending that. And with this setting, you can really drill in the specific defenses that you need to and come back with counter punches of your own, just like you would do in real boxing. You know, someone throws a jab at you, you slip, you come back and counter. And you now the best way to get better at boxing is by doing something over and over and over again. And with this, you can do that repetition, 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 this is great for that. And then we've got the sparring mode. This is where it's going to throw random punches at you. It might be straight punches, hooks. Just like if you were sparring with a real person, they throw random punches at you. You don't know what's going to come, they just throw them and it's on you to defend them. So this is going to really help with your reactions and your timing. And then we've got combo mode. This is where you enter in the combinations that you want this guy to throw at you. It might be a one-two hook. And all you're going to do is work on defending that one-two hook. Also, this is 
is the mode where you can put in combinations that you want to throw. It might be a one, one, two, lean back two, and then you can drill them as well. So this is the mode where it's kind of like having a mitt guy at your disposal, giving you the combinations that you want to work on. And also with all of these different modes, you can put it in southpaw mode. So whether you're a southpaw or you want to be against the southpaw, that's not a problem. So rather than this being the jab from an orthodox, then it's going to switch it up and then this is going to be the jab for the southpaw. Also, what you can do with each of these settings, the practice, the combos, and the sparring, is pick exactly how many rounds you want to do, how long you want each round to be, how long you want the recovery time to be, and also increase the intensity. So if you're finding, you know, sparring with this guy is too easy and you're beating it up, and then you can up the intensity to make them a little bit harder. So it's great because it's customizable to anybody's ability. So everything sounds great, right? But it's time to put the gloves on and see if it really is as good as it sounds. Now I've got it in practice mode, I'm putting it on jabs only, so I can throw the jab, this can throw the jab, and I put it on speed 27% because I wanna get used to it and don't wanna get embarrassed on camera. So here we go, three, two, one, I wanna step back and see what it looks like. So now the jab's coming, now I can slip. I can slip and I can counter. Slip, counter, it's just slow. I can lean back, jab. I can even jab there. But I am a high level boxer, so this is too slow for me. Let me speed this up, but I'm only going to speed up to 50%. Oh. So now the great thing about the practice mode is I can constantly think about this jab coming at us. I can slip and work on that hook to the body. If someone's through a jab at you, you know, you've slipped, boom, blast that hook to the body. I can do it here. Slip, hook body. Repetition, repetition. This is what gets you good at boxing. So now I've got all the punches coming. You've got the jab, the cross, the left hook, and the right hook. And now I can work on defending all of these. So we're here, slip the jab, slip the cross, block the hook, block the hook, slip the jab, slip the cross, block the hook, Block the hook. So now it's on 100%, let's do it. Oh, it hit me. Oh no, I got caught by the robot. One nil to the robot. So this thing is actually a lot of fun. You know, keeping me mind thinking because last thing I want to do is really get hit by this and not get lazy. And often when I'm on the heavy bag, I'll start switching off and thinking about something else. But with this, you can't really switch off, which is great because it's just improving your focus. So now I've just been practicing some defense. Now I'm gonna practice some offense on the combo mode where I put in the combinations that I wanna work on and then work on them. And it's got tons of different combos that we can choose from. And you can merge the combinations together as well. So I can do three of one combination, then three of another combination, then three of another combination. So I'm just looking right now which combination that I wanna work on. So I've picked the combination a one, two, hook, two, hook. I love this combo. So it's on speed 75%. One, two, three, two, three. One, two, three, two, three. Yes, this feels good. It's like having my mint man. Well, let's speed it up a little bit. I feel like I'm a little bit advanced for 75%. Let's go to 100%. This is really good. If you've not got a coach or someone to hold the mitts for you, this is perfect. Let me try this again. Jab, cross, hook, cross, hook. Nice, jab. Oh, look at that, I'm getting all fancy now. Yeah, I love that, that's a great one. Okay, let's add more to it. Now I wanna add more into this combination. So let's see what we've got. We've got the one, two, three, two, three, one, one, two. And then let's see if we can start off with a three. Come back with a three, two, three. Yes. Okay, so we've got a one, two, three, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, three. Let me try this one. Linked. Right. One, two, three, two, three. One, one, two, three, two, three. Yes. Too slow, too slow. Give me that speed, 100%. I'm a high level. I used to be, nearly. Right, okay, we've got that one, two, three, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, two, three. One, one. Ah, look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? Now I'm looking good, now I'm feeling good. 
giving me a little bit of confidence. This is great, especially if you've got no one to train with and you want to put combinations together. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. Now it's time to get some sparring in. Can this thing beat me in a sparring match? We'll soon find out. Okay, now I'm going to do some light sparring with this before I do the ultimate hard spar with it. So we click on sparring mode and then here we can use upper arms or lower arms or all arms. Yes, I'm going to do the all arms and then we can also pick the speed. This speed's getting knocked down at first to 40% before I do the hard sparring at 100%. Also, you can got the strike volume and the level. I'm gonna pick strike volume two before I do four and level three for the hard spawn at the end. And then we're gonna start. So now my goal is to defend the punches coming at us, throw the counter punches here, or I could even punch these as they're coming at me as well. It's got me thinking, it's definitely got us thinking. Cause the last thing I wanna do is get hit off the, this guy. Before I do the hard spawn. Ah, oh, enough of the light sparring. It's time to put this on a 100% speed, 100% strike level. And also, I'm going to put it on just the highest level it possibly goes. I'm going to put the strike volume on four, which is 100%. Then I'm going to put the speed up to 100%. Then I'm going to put the level to level three, which means the arms come in a little bit so there's less distance from the travel, so they're going to get to the target, which is my head, a little bit faster. Okay, I'm ready for this. Let's do it. My goal is right now not to get hit and a hit. As you've seen, the arms came in there a little bit. And I'm going to stand in range as well. I'm not going to be out of range. Let's go. Oh, I walked straight into a left hook, right on the top of the head. And it keep my hands up. Oh, that was good defense by me. Got hit again in the face. Need to keep this right hand up. Whoa! Come on, come on. Need to keep them hands up. Oh, I can't hit me when I got hands up. <laughs> ah, I think the robot won that on point. I just weighed in at 181.2 pounds and I'm going to see how much weight I can lose within 30 minutes wearing one of these cutting weight sauna suits. 30 minutes of training. Let's start the stopwatch and let's go. While I'm working out, I want to tell you why fighters over the years train in sauna suits and what is the actual benefits of them. And I think it might surprise you. From all of the all-time greats like Muhammad Ali to the modern day champions like Canelo Alvarez and Earl Spence all wear sauna suits. But why? Do they do something that we don't know? You may think the only reason is to lose weight fast, but there's actually a lot more that they do than that. Yes, Fitness did a research study when they were comparing people who were working out in a sauna suit compared to people who wouldn't, weren't working out in a sauna suit. And now it makes sense why fighters, bodybuilders, gym goers, and maybe why you should be wearing one of these sauna suits when you're working out. Now talking about the research study, people who were exercising in the sauna suit, they actually wore one of these cutting weight sauna suits for the study, they saw a massive boost in cardiovascular health, which improves things like your VO2 max, better fat oxidation in breaking down the fatty acids, higher resting metabolic rates, lowered glucose, and it's said that it significantly reduces body fat. The results make it clear that the heat stress from a sauna suit for training really does enhance health benefits, especially for overweight people. And even though boxers are generally not overweight people, I guess they do have to do what overweight people do to shred them extra pounds, right? Now, before I tell you what Dr. Dalek, who is a professor of exercise sports science, says about working out on sweatsuits, which will surprise you because it definitely surprised me. Let's have a look at how I'm getting on with this workout. I'm only nine minutes into this workout so far and it's not really been a workout, it's just been some light warm up, a little bit of jump rope, a little bit of shadow boxing, a little bit of moving around and the sweat is steaming out of my body. I can't wait to see just how much weight I do lose after these 30 minutes. And right now I'm gonna go back to my studio 
I'm going to punch the hell out of a heavy bag and the double M bag. Let's go. So Dr. Dalek says that regular everyday gym goers would benefit from wearing a sauna suit. Whether you're doing intense training or practical just everyday use, you will increase your aerobic capacity, easy for me to say, and endurance if you were wearing one. Honestly, I always thought that if you wore a sauna suit, all that you're going to do is remove the fluids out of your body, which when you stand on the scales, you're going to be lighter. Then as soon as you have a glass of water or drink the same amount of water that you've just extracted from your body, you're going to put that weight straight back on, which is obviously true, right? You take weight out, you put weight back in, you're going to be the same. But there is long-term benefits when it comes to weight loss when you're wearing a sauna suit. Now, this is something that I've just learned all about before I was doing this video. The heat that your body generates when wearing a sauna suit increases your metabolism both during and after your workout. So if you're regularly training in a sauna suit like I'm doing right now, you will certainly get them long-term benefits. Have you ever thought when you might see Canelo Alvarez in a training camp like weeks or months before he is getting weighed in, why is he wearing a sauna suit? Because yeah, you're going to extract that water from your body, then you're going to put it straight back on. But why is he doing this? Well, I think that's obviously the reason right there. So my skin's feeling hot. It feels like I'm actually in a sauna. So we're halfway through this workout, and if I had to guess, I'm going to lose between four and five pounds of sweat, which is a lot of water from this session. Now because I'm increasing my metabolism, I'm burning more calories wearing this than I would be if I wasn't wearing this. Also another big thing about heat resistance, like wearing one of these sweatsuits, is it helps improve your mental toughness because you hit a wall a lot faster when doing heat resistant type training. So you're gonna get that tough point faster that you need to push through. Some sauna suits are very difficult to punch with, but the cutting weight suit, what I'm wearing right now, I can still punch fast, I can still punch hard, and it's not ripping like the traditional sauna suits do. Yeah, it's getting tough, but I'm tough. <laughs> I'm really excited to see how much water has come out of my body at the end of this session because bloody hell, it really is getting tough now. And at the end of the session, are we going to be shocked by how much water has come out of my body? We've only got two minutes left. Let's go. When I was fighting, sometimes I would use just a black bin liner underneath my t-shirt while I was training or even get one of them cheap plastic PVC type suits that would rip after one or two sessions when you're using it. And you couldn't really wash them suits either. Now these cutting weight sauna suits is like nothing I've seen before when it comes to sauna suits. They're made from high quality neophene and nylon with extra thick stitching to hold up to like any kind of workout. And I'm very impressed by how comfortable they are. There's not any sort of training that you can't do in one of these suits. And they look great too. And what I always see on this channel is if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you perform better. And that's what we always want to be doing. Ah, finally, it's done. Before I get on the skills and see how much I've lost, I just want to see it. Cutting weight has done me a solid by giving all of my subscribers 10% off one of these suits. So if you're looking to get a sauna suit, why not get the best in the business? And then when your abs is popping out, you can thank me later. Just go to cuttingweight.com. The link is in this description down below and use code Tony and then you will get 10% off one of these great suits. Yes, the link is below. Click that link, code Tony and save 10%. Five minutes on and the sweat is still coming out of us, so I'm not going to jump on the skills until it's all out. Look at these boxer shorts, absolutely soaking. I'm guessing if I had a t-shirt on underneath the sauna suit, I probably would have lost more as well. Okay, let's do it. Let's get on the skills and see the results. 176.2 pounds. Whoa, that's five pounds of sweat that's come out of my body. And I feel like if I kept the sauna suit on for another 10, 15 minutes, the sweat will have continued coming out of me and I would have lost another pound or so. I just want to see when you're wearing a sauna suit, it's very important that you hydrate before and after your session. If you want to train at home, this next piece of equipment is something that you might have heard of. It's the quiet punch. 
because you can punch it and it's quiet no matter how hard you hit. Is this the solution for at-home boxing workouts that you don't need to drill holes in the ceiling or hang big heavy bags that you're not going to be making lots of noise that's disturbing your neighbours? Well, today on this video I'm going to test out this device, the Quiet Punch, and I'm going to hit it. I'm going to hit it very hard and find out what it's all about and is it worth it? Can you get great workouts from using this? Let's see what it's all about. It's very light, surprisingly light. Can this take my big power punches? We'll find out. Ooh, the pattern feels nice. That feels good. So we got the bars for the door, and then this for your phone for the punch tracker. Okay, now I need to find a door in this house and set this up. And that's the great thing about this. You can use it on any door. I just watched a quick two minute video on how to set this up. And it seems pretty simple. Kind of reminds us of a double end bag, and it is quiet as well. Now they've also got a sensor that's attached to the back of this, so we give it, they've give us this to put on top of here. This right here is for my phone to hook onto. That's nice. And one cool thing about this is because it's soft and there's not lots of that hard resistance, it feels like I wouldn't even need gloves on. So I could do a workout on here without any gloves, which is a uh, which is great, bit of a bit of a game changer. One thing that is great about this, what I love, it comes with this sheet with QR codes to scan for your setup video, scan for your app. It couldn't be easier to set up. 10 out of 10 for the setup. So I've downloaded the app and it's very nice. It says I've got to press the button on the punch tracker that's on the back to connect it. Oh, that was fast. Connected like that. Also, what's amazing, what this company have done for this app, they'll give you everything for free from instructional content to on-demand workouts to even live workouts where you're going to work with a trainer. So all that's on the app and the app is totally free as well. So now for the moment of truth, I've got the gloves on and now let's try it. And the first thing that really impresses us with this is how quiet it is. You know, if you've hit a heavy bag before, which I'm sure you have, you know it's like very loud. Even the double end bag is loud as well. But this, it's pretty quiet. Hence the name, Quiet Punch. Duh. And I really believe that I will be able to do this and have a boxing workout in the house while my kids is asleep in bed as well. So that's great. I'll definitely be using this for that. Another thing that you might be thinking about this, well, you can't throw hooks or you can't throw uppercuts on this. But just like a heavy bag, you can throw uppercuts. You've just got to obviously not come straight up or you'll miss, but you can punch out. So I'll throw uppercut like that. And as for the hooks, we can still throw hooks, but it would be shadow boxing hooks. So it would be like a, a ba, 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 ba. Yeah, we're missing the target, but we can still throw them. So let's not use that as an excuse. So I'm gonna do three things on here. One, I'm gonna do a little freestyle workout, punching it, and then two, I'm gonna do the 1,000 punch challenge where it times me to see how many times I can punch a thousand times, and then three, I'm gonna do my own challenge, the power punch challenge. I wanna see if this quiet punch can take my power, because I can punch pretty hard, and I'm gonna really put this to the test by hitting it as hard as I can. So first is the freestyle stuff. Okay, let me get this freestyle going. I'm gonna do a three minute round. And it's nice, it's kind of like when you start off in a double end bag and it's hard to hit. This is hard for me because, you know, I'm not used to it, but I know as soon as I get used to it, I'll be able to hit it great. Oh, there, I'm feeling it already. I'm popping up with a jab, popping up with a jab. And I'm never going to hurt my hands with this because it's very low impact, which is great. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the 1,000 punch challenge. It's a countdown timer that is on the app. A 1,000 punches is going to time me to see how long I can do it. But what we're going to do for you, we're going to speed this up because you'll be here all day long with me, 37-year-old man. So let's try it. So here we go. The 1,000 punch countdown. How long will it take? <laughs> Wow, a thousand punches is harder than I thought it might be. Oh, my arm's aching. I've got 750 left. But I'm not going to give up. All right, I'm going to do the last 500 with my gloves off. 
Oh, 150 left. Come on. Seven minutes exactly. Wow, that was burning my arms. And because I did the 12 second challenge before, that you can see here, I completed 82 punches in 12 seconds. So I thought, a thousand punches? I want to fly through this, maybe a couple of minutes, but seven minutes. Having them gloves on, bringing us down was tiring. So I took them off halfway through. I've got a great sweat on, but now that's great because now I've got something to work towards. Now I can try and beat that and try and get better form with the punches as well. Now I'm sweating. Nice little at home workout right there. Now I'm going to put the gloves back on and I'm going to do the test, the big test. Can this withstand the power of my big right hand? Because I can punch pretty hard. So let's find out if it can do it. Okay, here it goes. I hope it doesn't fall and smash me phone. The big right hand. Bah! Whoa. Bah! Bah! What? It took that power. Bah! Bah! Woo, look at that. This guy, the oldest piece of equipment in a boxing gym, the heavy bag. Let's talk about it. I was holding the mitts teaching a kid some boxing in Boxing Burn Brent Road a few years ago. And in the corner of my eye, I seen a figure walking towards the ring. And I didn't pay any attention because when I'm working with people, the, the peer person in front of us is the person who's getting all of my attention. So we're doing the mitts moving around, working on some different form and technique. And I seen this figure come up and kind of out of the corner of my eye, lean on the ropes like this. And again, I'm not paying any attention to him, catching the mitts, until the bell went and it was the end of the round. And I turn around and look, and who's standing there? It's the one and only Sugar Ray Leonard, just leaning on the ropes like this, watching. And I was like, whoa, hey Ray, give him a little fist pump. And he's like, hey Tony, and he said, hey Teddy, he knew the guy I was training. And I was like, oh, ni nice to meet you. And I'm a little bit starstruck already. And after the session, I was talking to Ray, and he was asking me questions about the mitts. And the reason why he was so interested in them is because when he was fighting, he never really done any mitt work. All he did was hit the heavy bag. And that makes me think, if someone like Sugar Ray Leonard, one of the greatest fighters of all time, didn't really do mitts, he was hitting the heavy bag, just what a great tool this is for you, for anyone in boxing. And on this video, I'm going to talk all about this and tell you the pros and cons of hitting the heavy bag. And what's crazy about that story at the beginning, from there, I became friends with Ray. And we did some workouts in person. We did a workout online in 2020 when the COVID was kicking off. And he's an absolute diamond of a geezer. Punching bags have been in martial arts since the entire history of military training. Forever. Obviously, they've progressed of not all as nice as this guy here. And coming up in boxing gym since I was 10 years old, like Ray said, this is the main tool that we used to get better, to improve, and to build our stamina, which are some of the great benefits there I'm going to get into a little bit deeper. I want to get into some of the cons about the heavy bag. Just because you go to the gym and you hit one of these doesn't mean you're going to end up like Sugar Ray Leonard or maybe go to the Olympics like I did and he did. But there's a lot of things that you can do on here that will make you worse at boxing. And that's one of the big cons about hitting the heavy bag all the time is it's not hitting your back. I mean, it's a pro as well because you're not getting hit. But, you know, we can easily get into bad habits when we're on the bag by, you know, throwing the punches, dropping our hands down, you know, switching off, like looking at your friend over there, looking what this guy's doing over there. So when you do that, when you're training for boxing, you will get into bad habits. And the last thing we want to do is get into bad habits because it takes a long time to get out of bad habits, what I've spoken about lots on this channel. Also, hitting the heavy bag, round after 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 round, which you've got to do if you want to get better at boxing, is boring. It can get boring as Yes, it will be. But the consistency of doing this over and over again, working on good form and technique will make you better at boxing. And as well, doing this for round after round after round after round will also help improve your stamina, which we all want. We all want great stamina. So hitting this is the best way of doing that. You know, people ask me all the time, Tony, how can I build my fitness for boxing? Do I need to get a TRX machine? Do I need to run 15 miles a day? Do I need to get a step climber? Do I need to climb up mountains? Do I need to get an ax and chop wood like we've seen Rocky Balboa? Do I need to buy a chicken and run around and try and catch it? To try to, to chase this little chicken. 
what do I gotta chase a chicken for? It's embarrassing. No, what you need to do is hit this guy, is box consistently on the heavy bag, and that will build your stamina and build your technique. And as well, it's great for the mind because you're building your concentration. I know it's hard, but you know, do it. And if you're not boxing to compete, great. This is a great tool as well for fitness. When you are hitting the heavy bag, when you're working on the heavy bag, you're getting a full body workout. There's not many muscles on your body that you're not working when you're hitting the heavy bag, if you're doing it properly, if you're moving your feet around, moving your upper body, you know, you're working your core as you're slipping, then you're throwing the punches, you're working on your breathing, you're working on good form, good technique, which is an absolute game changer, and you will get in the best shape ever by hitting one of these guys as well as your good diet as well. Want to get better head movement? Well, who doesn't? This next section is going to give you everything you need to know to move that head like a pro. The good old slip line, or should I say hand wrap that is tied from one part of the room to the other part of the room. And on this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can get better head movement by using a hand wrap, a piece of string, or anything really that you can tie from one part of the room to the other part of the room. So, the slip rope. Now this is great. It's not really used for a high intensity workout, although if you go at the pace that I went at the beginning of this video, your heart rate will race and you get a great workout on, but this is mainly used for technique, getting better head movement and footwork learning how to punch and move at the same time as well as move your head. So you're working a lot of different things here and it can be pretty advanced. You can do a lot of advanced things on here and on this video I'm going to show you some different things that you can do, some basic things and some advanced movements as well that will ultimately help you get better at boxing. So the benefits of this can be endless. You know, you're getting used to rolling and stepping at the same time. You're getting used to punching, rolling and stepping at the same time. I want to break it all down for you, so don't think about, oh, that was too much, but I want to break all that down for you. But the, in boxing, you need to know how to punch and step. You need to know how to roll and step. You need to know how to move your head. You need to get comfortable at moving your head because this, for a lot of people who was not that experienced at boxing, can feel uncomfortable. And I see this often on this channel. You know, you need to get comfortable at being uncomfortable in boxing to get better at it, you know. I mean, if you think about it, in boxing, someone is throwing punches at your face. You need to get comfortable with that. So before you get there, you know, let's, let's, let's get here. All right, so let's start off with some basic stuff. Now, what you wanna do, firstly, you wanna get the rope or the hand up, whatever you're using, your shoulder height there. This is my shoulder height. If it was here, no, this is too high. If it's here, it's too low. The reason why you want a shoulder height or like chin height here is because if you think this is where people will be punching you, this high here, and that's what we need to think of you know, like we rolling under, we roll under them punches. So you want to get uh, to the side of it and it's always good to stand with this on your lead side, me being orthodox, it's my left side here. And all I'm going to do to start off with is I'm gonna step my front foot to the side and roll my head like the letter U, keeping my eyes up, but my chin down. And then my back foot will follow. Now this shoulder is underneath here now. Again. Now when I'm rolling, I don't wanna to roll too much where I've come too far away from that because that's pretty unrealistic. If my opponent's standing there, I'm not really gonna to come to this side and be here. So you want, always wanna keep it so it's just come back at your shoulder. Like here. Now a common mistake with this, this is the most basic thing by the way, but the a common mistake I see with this will be, will be this. You see what I'm doing there? Like moving your neck. This is what you're not doing. You're not moving your neck. You're bending your knees. So you're bending your knees, keeping your core nice and tight, but relaxed at the same time here. And not once does my neck move anywhere. I'm here, I'm here. The way I'm moving side to side is with the feet. Step, step. Step, 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 step. Now this is, like I said, a basic way of using the, the slip line. Now, once you're comfortable with that, then what you can start doing, you can start moving forwards and backwards. And the way you do that, now rather than stepping just directly to me left with me front foot, now I'm gonna step diagonal forward and left. So I'm gonna come here, and then the back foot follows. 
You seen that? So I come diagonal, which is making me move forward. Now from the right side, I'm going to step uh, forward and to the right, just a little bit. Again, a common mistake that I see on this will be people, they'll roll to the left like this, and they'll roll to the right, and they'll step this foot forward. You never, ever, ever in boxing want to have your back foot in front of your foot foot, in front of your front foot, easy for me to say, because now I'm off balance. You want to keep that uh, back foot behind your front foot, but still slightly moving forward. Now I've moved forward, then to the left diagonal, to the right, and I'm keeping that head here, just next to the rope there. Boom, boom. That's moving forward. We want to move backwards as well. We want to move forwards and backwards. So when you're moving backwards with this, the same things apply. But obviously now you're going to move, when you move backwards, you're going to move your back foot first, diagonal back, with a step. Then the same with your front foot. You're not going to bring it back and cross your feet. You're going to keep it in front of your back foot. Slight step there. Then we're there. Then you can move forward and backwards. Now once you're getting comfortable doing this, now you can start doing some freestyle stuff. Just moving forwards and backwards. Getting used to moving forwards and backwards. And that right there is, is great. And that'll really help you. So that's what you want to start with. The very basics. So now let's throw some punches and then roll. Now, a great rule of thumb here is when you're rolling to your left, make sure you finish with a left side punch. Because if I throw a one, two, I'm not in a position really now to roll to my left as this comes back. Right? I'm off balance. But if I throw a one, two hook, now here I'm in the perfect position to get under. Now, if I throw a one, two, finish on the right side, I'm in the perfect position to roll under. One, two hook, roll under. One, two, roll under. Now, it doesn't matter what punch you throw, just as long as when I'm rolling left, I finish with a punch on the left side. So it might be a one, two left uppercut, roll. It could be a one, two, one right uppercut, roll to me right. Whatever hand you finish punching on, that's what side you roll to all the time. And that's what's going to help uh, help with the roll, help with the balance, because everything's balanced with this as well. You know, we focus on balance. So get used to doing that. Ba, 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 roll step. Ba, ba, roll step. Ba, 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 roll step. Ba, ba, roll step. Could just be a jab, roll step. Cross, roll step. As long as you're just finishing on that side. And now we can, what you can do, you can start advancing it a little bit more. So now let's just see, I could throw a one, two, one. Ba, 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 then roll step. You see what I did? I'm stepping forward and then roll step. I could throw a one, one, two, roll step. And now moving backwards, the same thing applies. So I can throw a one, two, hook, roll step. One, one, two, roll step. As long as I'm finishing on the correct side. And one more thing I want to see on this, a big reminder, a big, big reminder, is when you're throwing the punches, bring them back to your face before you roll step. And when you're rolling, your hands need to be up. I'll see it often where people will go, ba, ba, wa, ba, 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 hands down, hands down, hands down. Now, now I might look like Roy Jones Jr. or I might look like Prince Nazim Hamid here, but guess what? I'm not, I'm not Roy Jones Jr. I'm not Prince Nazim Hamid, so I'm not gonna do that, right? So keep your hands up while you are rolling and stepping. So that's it there, practicing it. Practicing it with the basics, then start adding on. And now, the more advanced stuff that I said, I promised that I was gonna show you. So we've worked on stepping, punching, rolling. Stepping, punching, rolling. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to roll, step, and punch at the same time. So a great combination that I like to do with this is a one, two, roll, step, boom, hook to the body. That is great. Now, if you think this combination just here, I'm going to break it down for you. I'll throw a one, two, right? I'm rolling and stepping. If he's throwing a left hook at me, that left hook's going over my head, I'm going underneath it. As I'm stepping, boom, that left hook's coming out, hitting him in the body. And then, then moving from this side, I can throw a jab, roll step with the cross to the body. So there's two great combinations there. A one, two, bah, roll step with a hook, a jab, bah, cross to the body. Or you could do a one, two, one to the body. Jab to the head, cross to the body, hook to the head. As long as you're stepping, keeping your feet underneath you, keeping your head close to this, that's good. And then you can start to speed it up and it'll look like this. Then moving forwards and backwards. Let's put some little overcuts in there. Ba, 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 ba. Just head moving on its own. Ba, ba. Look, I'm not even hitting that. The hand wrap, I'm moving. Now this is a good work, I move forward, backwards. One, one, two, roll, step, hook the body. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Oh. 
Everyone loves hitting the mitts. There's a lot of pros of doing this, but there's some cons about hitting the mitts as well. Let's talk about it. Straight, straight. Roll. Head body. Roll. Give it out. Double. Triple. Through the step. Ah, guys, <laughs> we started this video off with some fast mitt work because on this video we're going to talk all about mitt work, the pros and cons of hitting the mitts. And today I'm really happy to be joined by boxing mitt work expert Glenn Holmes, also my good friend and my business partner as well. So check out his channel for more videos like this one. Oh, I need to get me breath. Mitt work pros and cons. Glenn, mm -hmm. let's start off with the cons. There's so many pros, but I want to start off with the cons in mitt work. Probably the biggest con is there's a lot of um, mitt work uh, co coaches out there doing mitt work that don't keep it realistic. You've got to keep it realistic and what they'll tend to do is do more work than the boxer and it makes the boxer shorten up the punches and use bad form and that's the complete opposite of what we're trying to do with mitt work. We've seen that but what we've just did there is that a little demo was pretty unrealistic but we did that so you watch the video and you think whoa what was that we call out the hook so we've got you involved but that there it was unrealistic you wouldn't really do that in a fight or a competition right but in in 20 seconds how high your heart rate got from that and how yeah. much you had to concentrate on drilling the combinations but even though I'm doing maybe unrealistic combinations for a, a, a fight situation, what I try and do, my approach to it, is still make you keep your punches long and explosive and fast and make sure your defense is accurate. So even though we're doing maybe necessarily not the most realistic combinations in those yeah. flows, I'm still trying to make sure that you're punching long and I'm not doing too much work yeah. where you're just tapping it like this, which is the most common. Co yeah, because we've, we've seen that before. If you've got a social media account, if you've even seen Floyd Mirror, then let's do a little like, demo. Yeah, and it's like... And then the, then the coach is doing it, and, and it kind of it kind of looks like that. We make fun of that. It kind of looks like that. Yeah, that's what we were talking about the unrealistic combinations. But what we did there, like a, a, a one-two slip, two hook, two block. Yeah. This is a, a, it might not look realistic, but it really is. We'll do a fast. So it's a now right down there, fast like that. You might think, well, that's not realistic. But if we slowed it down, it is. Yeah. So we'll slow it down. I've done the one-two. I'm defending the jab with a slip there. And what's the best punch to throw there from the counter? It's going to be a two, and then a hook, and then a two, and then if he counters with a left hook, I'm going to block that. Now the best way to, to counter punch that block is by dropping me back heel, throwing that hook, boom, come up with a two. So it's a fast combination. Yes, you will never see that combination land exactly like that in a fight. Maybe, but you'll probably not. But everything we did was real and uh, I know I made fun a little bit about what we did at the start but again if you go back watch the start what we did everything we did was realistic even the uppercut hook too so he threw it there if someone if I'm in a fight with someone and they throw that look where they open boom from there so watch do it there so it's a boom 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 yep. come back with that so all we did we did realistic combinations but we put them together to make what we like to call a flow uh, but back on to the cons other cons of hitting the mitts, I mean the big one is, is your coach. If your coach is not right, it's, uh, you're not going to uh, be able to, to get better at boxing. But if you've got a good coach, you know, you will get better at boxing. But other cons is, if I'm throwing a jab at Glenn, you catch the jab, Glenn. Again. Again. So I fainted. You see what he's done? He come forward. He met the punch. And now, if we're fighting, you're not fighting someone who's coming forward like that. So that's another con, because... If you're hitting the heavy bag, obviously that doesn't move on a mitt, they're meeting your punches. Now he's got to meet my punch. If he doesn't meet me punch, I'm going to punch through, I'm going to get injured, he's going to get injured. So he needs to be strong and he needs to give me that resistance, especially when he's catching the punches for someone that hits really hard like me. <laughs> no, if you're in with someone who hits hard, you've got to give that strong resistance as well. Yeah. So that is another con right there, right? Yeah, on the flip side of that, the positive thing, is that I can create, I'm creating the targets for you every time. So like, you don't know exactly, you, you kind of get, you have to create your own target on the heavy bag. If you're just hitting the heavy bag, it's up to you to create your target. You're kind of zoning in on where right. you need to punch, right? Whereas with this, I'm creating the target for you, which is 
probably more realistic in, in the, if you're in a fight situation, the target's actually there for you, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. moving, it's not always in the same spot, but you've got to try and find that target. Yeah, that's a pro. Yeah. That's a pro. Yeah. Because, so. because you, you have to zone in on the target when it's yeah. available. With the heavy bike, it's always right there in front of you. And you just kind of find it, it's there, right? Yeah. But now, like, with the mitts, you've got to zone in on exactly the same spot for whatever punch right. it is. And one drill I like to use to just drill that real quick is give you random punches. Yeah. So you kind of always, you're not, he's not knowing what to expect. It's good for just training that reactive. So you see what I mean? Yeah. You, you're like reacting to the target like you would in a fight. It's like an opening, boom, I'm gonna catch it. Yeah. Boom, I'm gonna catch that opening. Uh, so that, I love doing that in terms of just keeping the... Yeah. No, that, that's great. That's, that's definitely another pro. But let's we keep talking. I want to talk more about the cons, and then we're going to talk about the pros. Another con is you kind of said it there. You're taking the thinking out of it for me. So when you're on the mitts with someone, the coach is kind of doing a lot of the thinking. Right there, Glenn's did a great example of not doing that. No, he's the best mitt work guy in the world. So you know, I I expect that from him. But tell me, you've never seen a coach who does that sort of stuff, right? Because that right there is making me think. Generally, a coach will do kind of some of the stuff that we did at the beginning, where every single punch, I only punch what he calls. Now, if he's calling out all of these punches, right, he's took the thinking out of it for me. Compared to when you're on the heavy bag, and when you're on the heavy bag, you've got to think for yourself. That's why it's, it's harder, generally, to hit the heavy bag than it is to hit the mitts. Because you've got to think, you've got to, um, it's not meeting you. you, it's there, you've got to punch through the target. Yeah, you've got to create the resistance for yourself. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly, you've got to create the resistance for yourself. I would tell people, you know, the heavy bag is generally better than the mitts. Right. Uh, definitely, uh, de well, I see that, but both for the pros and cons. But it's definitely better for the mitts for your conditioning. If you want to condition yourself for boxing and you haven't got a Glenn Holmes, you need to use the heavy bag more than the mitts because you could have a bad trainer yeah. who's there, ba ba, ba ba, or standing still, da da da, not moving up, ba 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 ba. You know, when you're on the heavy bag, you know you've got to put that work in yourself and it'll help you uh, bring up your conditioning. So a lot of the cons we've talked about so far are mostly because the trainers aren't doing it right. So for example, if they're not creating a realistic target, um, your job as the coach is to make your boxer or your client, whoever look good and use proper form and keep it as realistic as possible. So for example, you see a lot of coaches, they might hold the one two like this, so then you're punching straight across. And that is a very common mistake I'm yeah. gonna add in there. Coaches like this, and then the boxer ends up punching to the side. Now yeah. if I'm a boxer and I punch over there, guess where the power's gone? It's gone exactly over there. We want it straight down the pipe, right? Yeah. So a good tip for that is to keep it realistic and, and make you throw a good one too. And all the mitts real close together like this, and as soon as the jab's landed, just pull it away. So you can throw that one, two right down the pipe. One, two. There, so it's nice and long and straight. Yep, again. There you go. You can hear that pop too. And you go one, two, perfect, then it's right yeah. down that line and be punching right down that as if it was a head. Another one is mid work should be good for footwork and movement. Yeah. But a con, I guess, is a lot of coaches do it in place, aren't they? Yeah, so we'll have a coach who, who do the movement for you. So. Uh, let's let's give some examples, Glenn. With this, where you where you do the moving. So, so a lot of mid work you see on Instagram and on online, they'll just stand in place. They're doing the fancy combinations, and it's all just right here in place. There's no footwork involved. But then coaches who do try to put footwork in, they'll do it wrong, where they're doing more movement than the boxers. So they one two, and then you see this one two. There, you know, and I'm just end up dancing around him, and he's not even moved at all. Or it'll point or guide as well, so it takes that reactive element out of it too. So you'll see this quite a bit. So one, two, and then I'll just guide them like this, or I just point, and then tell them where to go, and kind of steering them like this. Now, if, if someone's not getting it, then you might need to do that, but you see that way too much, rather than just creating a realistic environment where I'm just kind of moving with him as if I was his opponent. One, two, and then gonna, man, come out. Good, so just moving with him, making him move, and it's like not that difficult to do. He's got to take a couple of steps in to make him move back or just create that distance, so he's got to use his footwork uh, in between. Them. Yeah, so basically, what we get on here is the cons is the trainer. If you don't have a, a great trainer, 
doing this and then it, it can be not great. Let's move on to the pros. There's some great, great pros out there for this. You want to talk about the first one? Yeah, about um, just keeping it realistic, but um, one, making sure that the resistance and timing's good because you said you want to feel really good, yeah. right? So uh, the huge pro is every time you get that pop, it's just that confidence builder, right? So if I'm, I'm creating good resistance and timing for it for a one-two hook, and he's getting that pop and that sound, that bat is just making you feel good, isn't it? It's yeah. just building that confidence. And you, you, what you talk about on your channel a lot is the, more you, the better you feel, the better yeah. you're going to be. Yeah, the better you feel, uh, you feel good, you're going to perform better and you're going to want to do it more. So whether you're doing this for fighting or you're doing this for fitness, uh, if you're a coach out there, you, know, you always want your boxer, your client to feel good. And if they feel good, they're going to continue to do it and they're going to improve in boxing. And that's what we want. We want everyone who's watching this to get better at boxing. Yeah. Now, another big, massive pro is it's fun. It's probably the most enjoyable thing that you will do when you're training for boxing is hitting the mitts. It's so much fun. I used to love hitting the mitts, you know? Hitting the heavy bag round after round. Let's just see you do six threes on a heavy bag. What I was doing three to five times a week when I was a professional boxer, it gets boring. It gets so boring. But now you're in with a coach who's giving you these combinations. He's making you slip, making you move, you're rolling, you're stepping, you know? doing all these great things, listening to that pop, what makes you feel good, yeah. you know, it's great for a, a boxer to do that. So for me, that's one of the biggest uh, pros. Yeah, and c compared to heavy bag, you're relying on that resistance and timing yourself and, and hitting the target yourself on the heavy bag. It's not always 10 times out of 10 gonna be perfectly landed shots on the heavy bag. Is it? I mean, if you're more experienced, it probably gonna be more, but um, most of the time when you're hitting the mitts with a good um, mitt holder, it's just giving you that confidence because your punches just feel perfectly timed every single time. So you make yeah. it feel good. Yeah, it does. So, so the feel good factor is is huge pro of this. And then, like when you're in with a good coach who's giving you the mitt work, you know, he's giving you the movement. You work on the defense. You're working on your reactions, yeah. which you can't get really from a heavy bag or or anything when you work on by yourself. So. Yeah. Yeah, that is huge. And now, like what I've just mentioned there, you know, boxers love hitting the mitts. Clients love hitting the mitts. People for fitness love hitting the mitts. If you're a coach and you're watching this, you want to be doing more mitt work, you know. Uh, now, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the trainers I work with. I work with Tommy Brooks, who was in the same, I was in the same training camp, camp as Evander Holyfield. Uh, he trained Mike Tyson. Tommy didn't do much mitt work with us. There's a little clip of it online, which I'll post on this video. Yeah, this is it. You know, I've done a little bit of mitt work with Tommy, but when I did do the mitt work, but I wasn't doing it all the time. He didn't like doing it, you know? And why would a coach like catching mitts with someone who punches hard like me, a light heavyweight, blasting them punches in? It, it make, it's hard on the elbows and the shoulders. It was great. Joe Gallagher, another coach I work with as a pro, hardly done any mitt work with Joe Gallagher. Another one didn't really like doing mitt work. Uh, it was more heavy bag and then jumping over, over a bar as well. I've done bar bag with, with Joe Gallagher. He's a great coach, but didn't do much mitt work and I didn't enjoy that. Terry Edwards, a very successful amateur boxing coach as well. Didn't do that much mitt work with him, but when I did, it was great. Now, Bobby Rimmer, on the other hand, uh, who I was with for seven of my 10 professional fights, he did mitt work all the time. I absolutely loved working with, with Bobby. Yeah, he used to get sore elbows and, and sore wrists, but he did it because he knew how the benefits of it and how good it made me and how much I enjoyed it. And now if a fighter is enjoying the training camp, they're going to train more. So if you're a coach out there and you're watching this, you should be definitely doing mitt work with your boxers. Now, I know it's hard on your shoulders and your elbows. Uh, if you're in with someone who's punching really hard, you need to get some better mitts. Now, I've got some mitts that I designed myself that I made, and this is not a sales pitch at all. You can get different sort of mitts like this, and they've got air in. So this is an image of my mitts right here. They've got air in, the air, they call the air cores. When someone is blasting them, you know, it's less impact on your shoulders and on your wrists. So if you get, invest in a good pair of mitts that's durable, that can absorb some of the punches, you know, that's gonna really help you as well. Yeah. Glenn's got these mitts he designed. He's, he spent a full year working on the design of these mitts. And you've seen, and you can hear, when I, every time I punch them, bah, 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 it makes me feel really good, right? These mitts is great. These are the biggest selling thing that we've got in our company, Glenn Holmes Mitts. And I'm afraid to see it, he sells more of them than I do mine, but I think mine's better. <laughs> but yeah, so if you're a coach and you're watching this, you definitely need to invest in some mitts and you definitely need to be doing mitt work with your boxers. And if you're a personal training coach, definitely be doing mitt work with your clients. So there is so many pros to this and 
it's all down to the coach, the pros and cons, you know. Uh, and for me, you can't beat the endurance from a heavy bag. Doing six three-minute rounds on a heavy bag, working on speed and power is really hard, not just physically, but mentally as well, because you've got to stay focused for that full time, where it's easier to stay focused on the mitts because you've got a coach there in front of you. But if you can get a coach to give you the mitt work, you know, do that all day long, because yeah. you can work on different things like reactions and, yeah. yeah. So the uh, punch variety as well. So some punches that are awkward on a traditional heavy bag, like uppercuts and body shots, they're great for drilling your technique on the mitts and, and getting uh, into good positions to land them shots. Um, and keeping it realistic as well, what we were touching on before. So you take like the uppercut hook cross combination and keep it in that small zone right there as if you was fighting an opponent. So right there. And then for the body shot, Keep that as realistic as possible, one body shot, yep, and again. And the good thing as well is, as the coach, as he's throwing that, I can look at where his non-punching hand is. If it's down, and keep him honest on it, as he throws the body shot, go just make sure that hand's up. And just making sure he's getting in good positions and executing good form and technique. And whether you're boxing for fitness or you're going into a training camp, or you're in a training camp for a fight, this is important stuff because it's keeping your punches realistic, it's adding your punch variety, and the coach is just keeping the the person they're working with, honest and, and really. Yeah, and that right there is something you can't do on a, on a heavy bag. He's got that uppercut hook too tight and inside there. Look, this is a more of a realistic target. So I can be bah, 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 working in like that. You can't do that on a bag. You can do it on a ball. I've done a video on the wrecking ball, but this is a target this big. This here is more condensed and more realistic. So that's another great thing about the the mitts is, is, the, is the target size right there as well. The Wrecking Ball. This is a great piece of equipment, a great heavy bag type thing. I like to hit in the gym. Let me show you this thing. <laughs> what is this funny shaped bag in a gym? You might have seen them before. These are called a teardrop bag or a Wrecking Ball. Came in like a Wrecking Ball. <laughs> 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 and that's not what they used for. You might have seen them for that, but they're not used for that. And on this video, I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of using one of these bags. This is actually one of my favorite pieces of equipment in a boxing gym. And as well, Conor McGregor, the MMA fighter, he trains here in Box and Burn every time he's in Los Angeles. And he always uses this ball right here. He loves this as well. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a clip of Conor McGregor in this gym using this wrecking ball. So the pros of hitting one of these. I love it because even though it's big and it's heavy, you can hit it really hard because it's pretty soft as well. So I can blast this bag and I'm hitting it full power. And there's not much impact on my hands, on my shoulders, on my elbows, because like I said, it's very soft. So you can whack it and you're going to be good. So you can use it for working on your power punches. Next thing is you can work on uppercuts on here. Compared to a traditional bag, it's very hard, virtually impossible to practice uppercuts on a long traditional bag. Now with this bag here, you can practice throwing uppercuts from both sides. Your lead uppercut, your rear uppercut, and as well, you can practice on combinations, adding the uppercuts in, like this. <laughs> Moving on, it's great for movement. You can work a lot of footwork with this as well, especially if you've got space to move around. Because when it's swinging and it's coming to you, you can move around, hit it, move your feet, move your feet, which I love about this. Yeah, it's great for working on footwork as well. And one more quick thing before I move on to the cons that I want to add in. I feel like it's easier to put one of these up than a heavy bag. It's easier to hold, lift up, and to put up than a heavy bag. I just thought I would add that in as well in case you're looking for a bag to get at home. Now, moving on to the cons on this bag. It's kinda the wrong height for you to roll. Now, I know this is a bit low for me right now, but even when it's higher, it's hard for, for you to really roll under this. Conor McGregor, you're going to see on the video in a little bit, he rolls underneath this with his wide stance and he gets really low. But like for me, I'm not a fan of trying to roll underneath one of these, especially because of the size of it as well. It's like a huge fist that will be coming at you. So yeah, I'm not a fan of trying to roll underneath the ball. And the next con is you can't really throw body shots on this bag. You can throw uppercuts here, 
but they're not like real body shots. And like I mentioned, this is a little bit low for me, so I can get down a little bit, but if it was my head height, which the height it's supposed to be, you know, you can't really blast in them body shots, which for me, you know, when I work in the bag, I love to throw lots of body punches. And as well, the other con, I suppose, is it's a big target, a big round target. So it's a lot bigger than the head is. So with it being a big target, I guess you can call that a con as well. But I actually love this bag. I love working on this wrecking ball. I don't like swinging on it like I did earlier. I love to punch it and get a great workout in when I'm using this. Now here it is, Conor McGregor working on the wrecking ball here in Box and Burn, Los Angeles, just before he fought Floyd Mayweather. Hitting the speed bag is very satisfying, but if you don't know how to do it, it can be very complicated, very awkward, and make you feel pretty silly. So I'm gonna teach you how to do it. I'm sure you've seen this before on films, on Rocky films, and it's really eye-catching, and it's not that hard to do. All I'm gonna do is go round with my hands like this, but I've got to keep the ball there, right? I wanna be close to it. Now, if I turn my hands, there's only one place that the ball can go, and that's straight back to my hands. That's why I can do this with my eyes closed, because I know the ball's gonna go straight back to my hands. And that's how it's easier than it looks. If I stand further back and I do it, what people normally do when they're trying this out for the first time, they lose control. So get close, not close where it's gonna hit you, but get close where the ball can't go anywhere but your hands and back to here. So I'm here, it's just spinning my hands. I can't go anywhere from back with my hand and that's it simple right now you've learned all about the equipment do you know how to throw the punches correctly well you should and if you click here right now i'm going to show you everything you need to know about all the individual punches in boxing click here and watch this video next